Thanks for tuning in to our broadcast today. I am so glad that you decided to watch what I'm going to be teaching today because I know it's going to be a blessing to you and yours. Now, call your family, call your friends, let them know Pastor Mike and the New Birth Church family is on the air. I'll see you in just a few moments after today's teaching. All right. If you have your Bible, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2 this morning. Ephesians chapter 2. I want to continue with the theme I started last week entitled Togetherness. 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 We've discovered already that we, the church body, its members, are the special K word. You remember what that word is? Begins with a K? Everybody say it out loud. Go. Koinonia. We are the koinonia. The koinonia means that we are a participative fellowship. We are a group of people who have recognized that Jesus Christ died on the cross for us and we submitted to his will and his way in our life. And as a result, we automatically become a part of this body called the koinonia. Say it again. The what? Koinonia. The koinonia. And so we have discovered up to this point that Wednesday night we discovered that the Spirit of God is the great unifier. And we looked at Leviticus chapter 23 Wednesday night and we saw a powerful prefigurement. I used an illustration of uh, two loaves of bread and the uh, sheaf of barley. A powerful prefigurement Koinonia is of the unity that we see today. And so I want to take it a step further and uh, I want a couple this morning. I want a, a man and wife. Who's a couple in here? Don't shy away and don't run. Avions, come on up here. Come, come here, Avions. Avions, come on up here. I pick on him. I can't pronounce his name. You and your wife. Come on, both of you come up here. <clears throat> and Wilhelmina. Avions, and y'all give it up. Y'all give it up for this husband and wife. Now, they didn't know I was going to select them this morning, did you? You didn't know. You didn't know. You didn't, not at all. You didn't, not at all. May I have a microphone? Uh, and uh, sometimes I stage it, but I figured I wouldn't do it because if you knew what I was going to ask, you wouldn't have come. <laughs> yeah, they're fine. Question. When Wilhelmina leaves the house, do you expect for her to come home? Absolutely. <laughs> Wilhelmina, when Aviance leaves the house, do you expect for him to come home? Yep, definitely. Okay. So let's say he's supposed to be home at 7 p.m. You know, that's maybe a regular time he'd get home from, from the job. And uh, he comes home at 10 o'clock. What, what type of questions would you ask? Well, at 8 o'clock, I'm texting him. I call him, I'm like, where you at? <laughs> I ain't waiting until 10 o'clock fast. His purpose was to do what? Creating himself. himself one out of the, thus making peace. And in this one body, to reconcile both of them to God, how? Through the cross, by which he was put to death. Okay, 17. He came and preached peace to you who were and who were near, 18. For through him, we both have access to the, by what? That's the unifying glue here. The Spirit of God unifies us. And I'm going to stop here. We're going to continue reading in just a second. But God has brought us, 
many of us from different backgrounds, different states, different cultures, different socioeconomic backdrops, uh, together, right here. And it's more than just this building here, all right? It's not the brick, the mortar, the, the aluminum, the, the, the drywall, and the screws, and the carpet that makes the church. It's the people that makes the church. Before this church had a church, we used to worship in various facilities, in gymnasiums. And there was one point in time where we didn't have a church. We didn't have a place to worship. And we had uh, acquired this land at that particular time. We hadn't paid for it, but we had acquired it. And uh, we were at one particular point where we didn't have a place to worship, so we got creative. This little street over here, we made it into a sanctuary. I ask everyone, we make phone calls, do we not? We got everybody on the phone and say, hey, bring your lawn chairs and your umbrellas because it was like July, super hot. And I said, bring whatever you need, bottled waters, whatever. We're going to have church outside. And so we lined up here on this street. We set up our lawn chairs and we had church. And I mean, we had a good time. And you know what those moments did? It solidified the church as the church. It solidified the people as the koinonia. We really didn't see ourselves as being associated with a building. We saw ourselves as the body and the building of Christ. And so that moment, after we had service outside, because we had no other, other place to go, that moment changed the way I even thought as a pastor about the congregation. I saw faithfulness that Sunday morning because... It was probably 90, 96 to 98 degrees. It was hot. And they danced and they shouted and policemen started driving by. We had amplifiers hooked up. We did things we shouldn't have done. I didn't have a permit. We didn't legally have electricity but we got it anyway. We tapped into one of these poles, one of the brothers, and, and then we had church outside. I was preaching, and I got to going, and I was excited. It was hot, and we were sweating. I saw one policeman. He slowed down, and I'm thinking to myself, please don't ask if we have a permit. But those moments were special in the history of our church. And I believe this series, in and of itself, is going to do something to help awaken us individually to the importance of who you are and how you fit into the scheme of the Kononia. Look at somebody and tell them, we really can't go without you. Verse 19 again, read with me. Consequently, you are no longer what? foreigners and aliens he's telling these gentiles he says but now you are what fellow citizens with god's people and 20 built on what built on the foundation of the apostles and the with christ jesus himself as the what 21 in him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a what? A holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you two are being built, how? To become a? In which God lives by his spirit. I want to read it again. Verse 19 through 22 in the Message Bible. Let's read it. That's plain enough, isn't it? You're no longer wandering exiles. This kingdom of faith is now your home country. You're no longer strangers or what? You belong here. Say it again. Look at the person next to you and tell them, you belong here. You belong here. With as much right to the name Christian as as anyone. God is building a home. He's uh-huh. Irrespective of how we got here. 
in what he is. Continue. This is good, isn't it? He used the apostles and prophets for the foundation. Now he's using, say it real loud. Now he's using, fitting you in how? Stone by stone. With Christ Jesus as the cornerstone that holds all the parts together. We see it day after a holy all of us built a temple in which God is quite at home. I can stop preaching right here. I think you got the point. I think you got the point. Show them the next slide for me, brothers, sisters. This concept of the koinonia, of us being the tabernacle of God, was actually prefigured in the encampment of Israel in Numbers chapter 2. Notice here, first glance, you only see the tabernacle because that's where your eyes are typically drawn. In the center part, you see the curtains that surrounding that small building with curtains. It's basically made out of curtains, that small building in the center. That was the makeshift tabernacle. You could pick it up and move when it was time to move. If you notice that line, that pillar that's coming from the sky, that's the pillar of fire that led them by night. And during daytime, this fire would transform into a cloud. And so by day, when God wanted them to take up camp and move, it would turn into a pillar of cloud, uh, a pillar of a, a cloud, and it would begin to move. And as it moved, the priest knew, oh, it's time to move. God's telling us to go. Everyone would pack up. But what I want you to know this is look around. You see thousands of tents surrounding this tabernacle. Basically what you see here is a house within a house. We see the tabernacle and we call it God's house, do we not? But you see the prefigurement of the koinonia because God is surrounded and encased by the tribes of Israel. And it's like that's his house. A house within a house. And I'm trying to get you to see a picture. Show the next slide. It's a different picture of the same event here. Look at the picture here. The Israelite encampment. You see the same thing. And if you're up close, you can see the different tribes, how it's, it's parsed out here. Show them the next slide. This is a beautiful picture of the inner house of God. This is called the holy place. All right? When you, the priests would walk into the tabernacle, this is what they saw. A room full of furniture. You see the golden lampstand to your left. You see the altar of incense, which represents prayer, incense, rises to the Lord, and to the right, you see a table. It's almost like a dinner table. It's like the Lord says, come on in, have a seat. It's called the table of showbread. Show them the next slide. Another picture of the same room, but with the curtains opened up. There's a second room in the back, and you can see the pillars. <laughs> Behind those pillars, you see the Ark of the Covenant. That's called the Holy of Holies, or the Most Holy Place. Everyone say the Most Holy Place. Most holy place. And so you can see the curtains opened up. But typically, the curtains are closed, and only the high priest could go back there one time a year, and that's during the Day of Atonement in the month of Tishri, our month of consecration. Next slide. On this table, and this is what I want to pinpoint in reference to who we are as the body of Christ, you see the table of showbread. Six loaves on each side, 12 together, the 12 tribes of Israel. 
It's as though God says, I want you to come in to my presence and sit down and eat. The priests would eat this bread at the end of the week before they put out the new bread. In the New Testament, in the book of Peter, it says that now all of us are priests. And so all of us can now commune with God on equal footing. Although I'm the pastor, and scripturally speaking, you have to have a leader, you have to have a shepherd over a flock. But you don't have to come to me to get to God. And too many churches have set up the pastor as the way to get to God, and that's not the way it should be. Jesus Christ is the way we get to God. And my job as the pastor is to point you to Jesus. Remember John. John had his own disciples, John the Baptist. After John baptized Jesus, he recognized Jesus was the Son of God. One day, John was walking with some of his disciples, and they saw Jesus. John pointed to Jesus and told his disciples, that's the Son of God, go follow him. That's what pastors should be doing. Don't look to me as the head of your spirituality. I am your spiritual coach. I am the servant of God. I am the angel of the house. But it's not me that creates that relationship between you and God. You do that now because we're all on what? Equal, equal footing. My job is to teach you the scriptures and to lead you to who? Not to myself. So we can all sit at the table Come over here where the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. And so God is inviting all of us this morning to become active participants in this thing we call the koinonia. I want to show you a couple of more scriptures. Now, for you lone wolves out there, you know, people who say, well, you know, I don't need a church body. God understands me. The scriptures tells me that, you know, God is in my heart and my body is a temple. And that is true. But the scriptures that you usually use to justify that point of view, uh, you're probably using them out of context. And this is what I'm speaking about. For instance, 1 Peter. Look at 1 Peter uh, 2, and I'm going to show it to you on the screen. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. It says, what? As building stones for the what? Vibrant with life, in which you'll serve as what? Offering Christ approved up to God. Go to the next one. <laughs> That's plain enough, isn't it? You're no longer wandering exiles. Let's see. I think they have the wrong slide there. Yeah. Thanks. Here it is, go. You realize, don't you, that you are the what? Now, let me tell you a secret. In the Greek Bible, the word you here is plural. It's not singular, as in you. It is you. Because he wrote the letter to the church body. And so he was speaking pluralistically. Now, it is true that God is in you, but what Paul drives home is the, the collaboration of this koinonia, working together in participation to grow the kingdom of God. Today, what I want to do is I want to challenge you, challenge you to take the koinonia more seriously. Be here when the doors are open. Sundays is one day. We're open two days. Wednesday. Sunday, about an hour and a half, I have your attention, and you get about 40 minutes of teaching. Wednesdays, you get about 40, 45 minutes of teaching. Add that up, what do you have? About an hour and what? Yeah. How many hours are there in a the week? Say it again. 
How many? 166 hours in a week. And so your spiritual leaders are asking you to come together with the koinonia for approximately a little under two hours. Is that too much? No. no. I'm here to challenge you this morning. Let's see if we can do better with that. Because, you want to know why? When the koinonia, and I'm going to show you this in the next few teachings, when the koinonia comes together, there's supernatural activity that takes place in your lives that you do not know is taking place simply because you have submitted yourself to the koinonia. Think about this. Seriously. That when I come in these type of meetings like today, I am submitting myself not only to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, but I submit myself to Sister Brown and Brother Green and Aviance. When I come, I sit my, submit myself to Jocelyn. It's like I'm saying, Jocelyn needs me. Here's the secret. Whether or not I even talked to Jocelyn, I was there in the corner near. And that supernatural activity is going on. The ministry of angels are taking place right now. Hallelujah. Truth of the matter is many of your problems are being solved simply because you're in obedience, sitting in the koinonia. It's not just coming to church. Look at somebody real quick and tell them, it's not just about coming to church. It's about being a part of the koinonia. That's what it's about. It's a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual thing. That's why I pray for you, you guys. Because I understand that when we come together, God's doing something. And I don't want the enemy to dupe you. And dupe you out of your blessing. No. That's why I pray for you. That's why we love on each other. Take 60 seconds. Go to somebody you hadn't talked to today. Go to somebody you don't even know because they're part of the corner near. Take 60 seconds and it's no restroom breaks. Not right now. <laughs> 60 seconds, go. Go to somebody you don't even know. Someone you hadn't even talked to today. future is bright yes I'm moving forward uh -huh. yes I got a pep in my step I'm moving forward mm-hmm cuz God is good I I'm moving forward come on straighten up your back I'm moving forward hold your head up high yes I'm moving forward. Yes. Woo! I'm moving forward. Come on, say that with some confidence. Yes. I'm moving forward. Yeah. Look at somebody. Look them in the eye and tell them. I'm moving forward. 
Oh, you gotta say it like you mean it. Well, this is all the time that we have to show our program today. But tune in next week for more. I guarantee I have a word for you. Well, I want you to visit with me this Sunday. You've been thinking about it. You've been pondering over it. But be my special guest this week. And I have something special for you. I have a packet called the VIP packet. And it's just for you. It's waiting for you as your name on it. And don't leave the service without shaking my hand. I'd love to greet you. Well, God bless you. Be safe out there. It's getting warm. Hey, by the way, if you have any barbecue recipes, email them to me. I need some. Be safe. <laughs>